my best friend, John Paul Furman, uh, basically introduced me into motorcycle racing. His father, uh, John Paul Furman Sr., was racing side hacks at that time. And uh, we basically wanted to do what he was doing. So there was a few of our friends in junior high, uh, Tom Finvers and Tom Lunn. We basically liked all the same things, basically motorcycles. And uh, since we couldn't own one, we started riding our Stingrays around and basically trying to make them look like motorcycles at that particular time. And since there wasn't any uh, BMX parts that were being made, we used what we can that was from a motorcycle and integrated it into our bicycles. We were about 13, 14 years old. Uh, early, early 70s, about 72, 73. Our first one was actually from my Schwinn Stingray. Uh, we were looking at John Poffman's father, uh, his motorcycle sidecar, and we just kind of looked at it and started bending some metal. Uh, JP was doing the welding. Not very good, but uh, we got it together. Our first sidecar was from a Schwinn bike. And uh, after that, uh, we really didn't have a person designing it. We just kind of came up with our own design by pictures of uh, motorcycle sidecars in those days. The fastest one, uh, the one I most enjoyed was uh, Yarn Out track. Had the biggest jumps, had the fastest speeds. And at that time, we weren't too sure if our sidecar can survive uh, the basic track itself. It was very, uh, there was a lot of air time on that track. During that time, uh, with, especially with our sidecar, we were going through your typical bicycle rims. Uh, two or three a week, just basically bending them to, uh, you can't fix them anymore. So when the Moto Mags came out, uh, they basically would survive uh, a lot more races. And uh, yeah, they were a much better wheel. I believe uh, the Wasp was the uh, main maker of a sidecar from Europe. And the 11, not too sure where that came about, but JP kind of just put on whatever numbers he wanted to. But we tried to emulate this, uh, this team called Grog and Grabber, which were from Europe. And they were the best sidecar team over there. So whatever they had on their sidecar, we had on ours. Well, it's funny, our first sidecar was on the right. And um, yes, uh, after watching some European races and the European sidecar teams, they were all on the left, so we switched. That's what we rode basically up until 1975. Oh my gosh, they were probably our main competitors. When we first started racing at Solid Ed Sands, for instance, um, how we operated it at that track, we would pull in, Rick would register us for the race. Uh, as soon as our race schedule came up and it was a time for us to race, we would go to the, to the starting gate and win the race, come down, go right back into the van and sit there. And people were intimidated because they didn't know who we were. Uh, we were winning all the races. They <laughs> didn't understand why we didn't socialize with everybody else. They basically, they were intrigued at what we were doing. So that was some of our in, uh, intimidation uh, tactic back then. And uh, the other riders basically didn't do any of that. They pulled around, did whatever they wanted to do in the pits. Basically nobody was allowed into our pit. And we kind of kept silent and kept quiet. And well, after a while, of course, that all changed, but uh, when we first started out, that's how we operated at the racetrack. <laughs>